Hi, I'm Steve. And I'm Marcus. And welcome to... Lost in Talbot. Hello and welcome to Lost in Telford and this is the first of a series of films about things that you just don't know exist. We're starting this special off and most of it is related to the Ironbridge Gorge. So without further ado let's look at our first location. Well we are here and you can see this large wooded area here. This is known as the Lloyds or Lloyds Coppice. It's a very steeply sided um, sort of embankment that runs down to the river. Over the years, it's been completely exploited by mining um, and mineral extraction. Now, we're interested in a particular area here where Colport High Street, this particular road here, or Colport Road, meets the Lloyds. And you can see a little cluster of buildings here and a lane going up there. Well, this is the site of Maidley Wood Hall, the once home to the Anstice family and also where the empire, the Maidley Wood Company, was run from. Without further ado, let's go and investigate this location. Maidley was no stranger to big, elegant houses. Maidleywood Hall was no exception. It was set on an elevated plateau on the edge of Maidley Wood, which was also known as Lloyd's Coppice. It was built in 1805 by the Anstice family, who moved away from the industrial area of Bedlam near Iron Bridge. The Anstice family were local industrialists who operated the Maidley Wood Company, which consisted of mines, ironworks and brickworks in the immediate area. In the heyday of the Maidley Wood Hall, it had six to seven servants and the house was set in a hundred acres of parkland. The estate was looked after by 18 workers. Just like anywhere in the Ironbridge Gorge, the Lloyds fell victim to subsidence as the mines exploited the minerals in the grain below. Later, the hall was owned by the Bird family. Subsidence finally hit the house and the family left in the early 1900s and it was demolished in the 1920s. We have no doubt the Anstice family were a big part of the history of the gorge and this is marked by the family memorial hall in the centre of Maidley, affectionately known as the Anstice. So we are walking down one of the sweeping driveways into the hall itself, Maidleywood Hall. You can always tell with any stately home or hall, the actual trees that are not native. If you've got a lot of money, you buy trees like this and then put your money your grounds. So me and Marcus are now standing in Maidley Hall. I'm not sure what part, but this is where it has actually originally stood here. And I'm actually standing on a pile of bricks, aren't I? Can you feel them under your feet? Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I think this place was completely bulldozed flat. And it's hard to think that in these lovely sort of woodland here, that there was once a mighty stately home. I found here what seems to be a doorstep of some kind. You can see at the edge of it is sort of bull nose, that's nice and smooth. Um, and this is actually, might have been the entrance into the building. It's too hard to say, but we've got these lovely bits of masonry here. You can see, you can see Marcus is holding there. That looks like a ridge tile to me. We're not 100% sure, but actually on the other side of it, there are some holes on it there, but well, that's a lovely bit of old slate that is. And look how, how well that's sort of rounded off. What a nice find. And this is the sweeping driveway to the entrance to the hall. Well, 
right behind me where we've just discovered the masonry we're looking at the elevation of the building and the building faces towards the river over that way so where we've just found this masonry and this doorstep in this would have been the side of the building because what we do know according to the plan is that the um, frontage of the building actually ran along this way facing over towards the river so I think the view across the river would have been the important um, aspect to that what we do know is over that direction was the Lloyds and that was the main activity of the Maidley Wood Company but this beautiful house that stood on this site overlooked the beautiful Ironbridge Gorge and views up over Jackfield and Brosley so there we are behind Marcus we have the front door to Maidley Hall now we know there's a photograph and that'll be on the screen now and that shows that exact position that Marcus is standing in it's so hard to imagine so how do you feel like how do you feel that you're standing in on the front doorstep of a of a magnificent uh, Georgian hall yeah it's um we can see a lot of the bricks here and everything so we can see where it was so here it looks like we've got a couple of window lintels here they've definitely got that sort of shape about them if you look it goes to show amongst all of this all of this <laughs> laurels and trees and overgrowth that actually there is a house underneath here and uh, we don't mind getting in the thick of it do we to show it to you An ice house is a fridge, a big fridge. Imagine storing your food in this. I mean, where on earth did they get all of that ice from for this? I mean, where do you even get ice from? How do you even make it? Because obviously we know we make ice in a freezer. Uh, and a freezer is a modern implement. So how do you, how do you do it? Answer some postcard, please. Next we're going to look at the lower entrance into Maidley Wood Hall. So as we walk up the Colport Road towards Maidley, we are greeted with these buildings here, um, which were the original entrance buildings and farm buildings. In theory the two in front are just two cottages. But as you can see from the rear of the property, it's got its own little sort of courtyard. And as you can see here, this is the entrance into Maidley Wood Hall, the lower entrance. So I would imagine this may be in a stable block of some kind back in its day. But you can see that huge retaining wall that's running up the site there. So you can see there, it says the groom's house there, you can see. But you can actually look at the detail on the actual um, building itself. But this would have been the entrance into the um, Maidley Wood Hall. So as we make our way up here, you can start to see, so obviously the driveway would have been a lot wider originally. Um, and imagine back in the day it would have been used for horse and carts and things like that but you can see as we start to come up the hill a little bit you can start to see the amazing array of trees that are here 
I mean this beautiful evergreen here look and as we sort of come up now you can start to see some of the rubble um, small bits of the rubble here look just strewn here I think there's a bit of a, a bit of a, a tile there look you see that's quite a thick tile um, and a few bricks scattered around the place so this really is where the rubble field from the hole started so hopefully we'll be able to find some more interesting features as we explore the area so now it sort of comes around the corner now there we go and you would have from this driveway I've met the house sort of side on well I, I, we found a lot more than we was expecting there Marcus didn't we yeah quite um, a lot. lots of lintels and bits and pieces here which um, I wouldn't expect any I was expecting it all to have vanished I mean I know we've we've got the ice saves here but um, it's very interesting. I wonder what it would have been like to, to live here. Would, I mean, none of these trees would be here, would they? It would be a clear view all over. Yeah. You can see why they built it here. Because it's almost like, a, almost like a plateau, isn't it? Yeah, it would have been open space. Yeah. Very Well, that was very interesting, wasn't it? Well, we leave the area here of Maidley Wood and we travel up the Lloyds towards Iron Bridge to this little area here. And if we zoom in, we can have a look. So here we've got the location of the old school, but it's this particular area here we're interested in. This used to be a small community of cottages called New Buildings, which were built for the workers of the Maidley Wood Company. Let's take a closer look. The Anstice family and the Maidley Wood Company really held its hardworking staff in high regard. And on this small, elevated, secluded riverside site, the company set about building 16 new cottages in a distinctive L shape. These early 19th century cottages were built without the modern amenities, although it did have an outside privy. The small community started to grow along the river, stretching from Bedlam Furnaces to the brand new school at the Lloyds. The Anstice employees had all they needed at work, home and school and a pub. The old schoolhouse still remains as a private dwelling, but around the area of new buildings were various dwellings that looked over the river. We know that new buildings was demolished in August 1969 and while the bulldozers rumbled away in the neighbouring properties, people were still tending to their gardens and hanging out the washing before being relocated. The residents of new buildings went on to receive new houses within the new town and enjoy the luxury of a bathroom and hot running water. The demolition of new buildings was the Telford Development Corporation's way of cleansing the old area and all of the derelict buildings of the Ironbridge Gorge. So join me 
as I go on a voyage of discovery to find out what is left of the original site of new buildings. We are now going to look for a small community called New Buildings that was built on this road here just outside Iron Bridge near the Lloyds. So this area here is roughly where the houses would have been, this um, big row of cottages here, just down in this hump here. So let's go down and see if we can find any remnants of these cottages that were demolished. So I can see straight away there's a lot of, um, there's, there's a bit of rubble in the ground here. But it's quite a flat area as you can see. Um, you know, has it been landscaped or anything? So we'll have a little dabble through. Because there's quite a few little cottages in this, uh, in this sort of clearing. Almost like a, a little community. Now, we're sort of, I would say, we're roughly where the um, outside toilets were at the back. So you can start to see a little bit of brickwork appearing here, look. The, yeah, there's all sorts of bits of rubbish, bits of tin and stuff like that. Potentially they could be the roof of these uh, outside toilets. There's a good example of one of the bricks. Now these cottages, this would have been the view from the back garden I would imagine. You can see why they've, uh, why they've done that. But it's saying here that there were some cottages that were really right down backed by the river. So it's saying down there at the bottom alongside the river, there is some kind of trackway that access those properties. So you can actually start to see this pathway, this sort of leveled pathway into these cottages here on this lower bank here let's get down there and have a look you can see here there's a little bit of um, floor tile there so even though we are in the woods or down here in this bracken it's hard to think that there was originally a community around here So we're now on the western edge of the um, the cottages and it kind of sort of comes back on itself in an L shape and this is part of the L here. So you can see here we've got some rather large sort of stones in there um, making up that bank but also we've got these trees here. So you take these trees, look at them there, they're more like you'd find in a, uh, in a stately home or something like that. So these have been planted deliberately on this site here. Um, I mean, they, could, they, look, they look quite old as well. So maybe that could be part of it. I don't know if anybody's come over the, uh, over the Lloyds and noticed these big chunks of slag that are on the side of the road.
So right behind me is the last property and the houses then go off down on an L shape. We've got this really nice wall coming up here. Now, by the looks of it, if you actually look at the end of it, you can actually see that the wall itself would have probably carried on now. It doesn't look like it's ended. It's got just had bricks put on the end there on the corner. So I should imagine um, this made way for the terrace to run up to the side of my left hand side now. So down the bottom there, there would have been a, in that sort of clearing there, there would have been a cluster of small cottages. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Well, our next location takes us from this area here, right the way over to Colbrook Dale. Right, we're going right up, right up into Colbrook Dale, right up to the top here, and this area here, which is known as Sunnyside. You can see there, the road name there, Sunnyside Avenue, and we're looking at this particular area here. This was once a home to the Derby family. Sunnyside is an area of Colbrook Dale that has a very interesting history. In 1717, the site was occupied by a farm known as Furnace Bank. The original owners of Furnace Bank Farm were very wealthy and the farm came with 42 acres of land and a further 14 acres of coppice. The land of Furnace Bank Farm was later sold off and some of the parts were occupied by the Derby family. They also purchased the 30 additional buildings across the estate. Abraham Derby built Dale House on the land that was purchased from Furnace Bank Farm. A beautiful house was built on the site of the farm and this was a very distinctive white house which was later renamed Sunnyside House. The land to the rear of the original farm was actually called Sunny Bank and this is where the name derived from. The first house to be built was a large classical building built in and around 1750 this house survived until its demolition in 1856. The White House then replaced it and that was first recorded in 1806. We don't know whether the whole house was demolished or just part of it, but this became the home of Francis Darby. Sunnyside came with extensive gardens, including its own exclusive deer park, populated with imported deer. This was all overseen by Deborah Darby. The family lived there until 1935 and the house was demolished in the 1960s and the site became a nursery for the Telford Development Corporation and then much later a new housing estate which is now known as Sunnyside. You can clearly see the boundary wall of the farm. Let's see what else is here and let's explore the area of Sunnyside. So now our next mission is to find Sunnyside House at the top of Colbrook Dale. The first thing we see is the retaining wall coming up the side here and then just over here we've got a bit of a nice curve in the wall which would hopefully show us the entrance into Sunnyside itself. And behind me it was Sunnyside House which was demolished in the 1960s. So here now we have one of the old farm buildings here and we've realised that there's a large wall that surrounds this farm. So here's some more boundary wall of the farm. So we're now at the back end of the farm and this is the huge boundary wall. Just 
just noticed on the, the wall, the outside wall, that the bricks are gradiated in. Every big house needs its own big garden, and this was the one for Sunnyside. This area is where the Derby family had their own deer park. Well that's it, me and Marcus have hunted for Sunnyside House. Well we knew it had gone, Dad, didn't we? So, um, but it's a few little bits and pieces left here and there if you, if you care to look. But that's another forgotten building of Telford. Well, that is fascinating to find out that that house stood there. Quite interesting. Well, we're not moving too far away on the next um, location. So we're gonna come down Derby Road, down into Colbrook Dale itself, and then we're gonna come over to this area here on the junction of Wellington Road and Church Road. Now, if we zoom in, you can see the big chapel there, okay? But we're interested in this little piece of land here. Do you just see that? Totally there. There's a little walkway that runs up along the back there. But this was the home to a row of cottages that were built by the Colbert Dale Company. Let's go and investigate. The Colbrookdale Wesleyan Chapel has stood on the corner of Wellington Road and Church Road since 1785 in one form or another. To the right of the chapel was a select row of 12 cottages affectionately known as Chapel Row. Chapel Row was one of many cottages built by the Colbrookdale Company for its workforce. One of the most famous rows was called Carpenter's Row, which has recently been renovated. The Darbys came to Colbrookdale in 1709, and with the success of the Colbrookdale Company, housing was needed for its employees, but also good quality housing. They also built these houses as an attraction to workers to come and work at the Colbrookdale Company. They provided good accommodation with just under 33 square metres of space and they were higher standard than any of the other properties being built in the area. By the 1790s the Colbert Dale Company was a powerhouse and they charged just 7% of the employees wages for their homes. They were simple homes with a simple living room, pantry, outside coal store and a privy, no bathrooms or running water. Chapel Row was finally demolished in 1969 when better homes were required with the coming of the new town. Hi there it's Steve here from Telford Automat Guide and we've got Marcus here from Telford Memories and we are now going to try and find Chapel Row which is behind me it's a row of cottages that run sort of just behind this chapel here so let's go and see what's left. So we've got the chapel here and then there's a lane up the side of the chapel. So we're gonna take a look up there first. So behind me would have been Chapel Row. Um, you could be able to see how the ground has been leveled out here. So me and Marcus have now found the, we've finally found Chapel Row, hidden here in this little glen that's here. Um, it's hard to think, isn't it, that there was a, a row of cottages here and all of the people yeah. that would have lived here and they, you know, it's, uh, it's, quite, it's quite awesome to think of really. But the, the you know, Colbert Dale and Iron Bridge was, was full of little rows of terraces like this, yeah. weren't they? You know. Yeah, I can see from the pictures that the rows were along here and the gardens in front of the, the rows. Yeah. There's plenty of bricks around. So. 
There is, yeah, there's a lot of rubble scattered around. So hopefully we're going to find the end of the row now. Um, I'll tell you what, we have to scramble through some, some thorns and stuff here to bring this to you. So as you come up here, you can start to see the, it looks like the retaining wall at back, the back of the house. You can actually see that the back of that wall has been rendered, but it looks like it's been built of old bits of slag and things like that, which is quite apt as we're near a furnace. But also we've got this cast iron drain pipe here sticking out. Well, there you go. That is Chapel Row in Colbrook Dale. Gone, but not forgotten. Well, thank you for watching the first episode of Lost in Telford and join us again for another video very soon. And thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.